In this video, we're gonna be doing a step-by-step, no-nonsense approach to sponsored product campaigns. These are typically the most highly profitable campaigns you can run with the highest click-through rates, the highest conversion rates, and they're most effective to most sellers. So we're gonna get into every detail, how it all works, and show you how to set it up properly. Let's get into it. Now to set up proper sponsored product campaigns, all you need to do, of course, is go into the ad console and go to create a campaign. And from here, we're gonna break everything down, how it all works, what you need to set up. And first thing you wanna do, of course, is go on the sponsored product tab, and you'll get to this stage here. Now, firstly, when it comes to ad groups, if you wanna have an ad group name, that's entirely up to you. You could do ad group one, for example. But in most cases, you wanna do one ad group per campaign. There's no need to have multiple ad groups unless you're testing slight differences in what you're actually targeting. But in most cases, it just clutters your campaign. It's better to stick to one ad group per campaign. So of course, go ahead and select your product. And then next you'll be choosing what you're targeting. So we're gonna get into both of these in a moment, but first we'll start with manual targeting as is the most important one to do. And then of course, keyword targeting. So keyword targeting and product targeting. There's a pretty big difference between the two. Keyword targeting we'll start out with, but Obviously, if you're choosing between the two, you are sometimes gonna be showing up on products anyway, and especially if you're running auto campaigns or broad match, you will get ASINs turn up, but this is giving Amazon the preference that you actually wanna run on. So it's worth obviously selecting the one you're gonna go for and keeping these separated if you can. So make sure you choose keyword targeting here, and then next you'll get down to keyword targeting itself. So between the three match types, what you want to consider is that they all operate in different ways. So exact match will work exactly as it says. The word will be what you write. So no changes, nothing else will show up, just that keyword. So if that's what you're going for, that's what you need to input. Phrase will include the actual keyword plus anything in addition. It's a great way to find long tail keywords and it's a great way to expand what you're actually targeting. But if you know what you're targeting already, best stick with the exact. So on top of that, a broad is something you can use as well. Now, broad, it works in a different way. If you put two search terms in, you're not always gonna get those two search terms within your target. They're gonna look at what you're actually targeting and they can include close match, substitutes. They can go as broad as they want. So in some cases, I do use it. I use it as a modified broad by putting the plus sign in front of each search term. But in most cases, I don't like to use broad. It can cost a lot of money. It's a lot of wasted spend. It's more efficient to use phrase than exact, but it's up to you what you wanna do. So that's how that works. Of course, then you can go ahead and select your keywords. Make sure you have the right amount set on there. If you wanna use the suggested tab, you can go down that route select the keywords that you want, as well as you can enter them in if you've got them and they're not showing up, or you can upload a file. That might be the easiest way if you have them in Amazon's template already. So select your keyword. So this could be such as Logitech speakers. I'll just put logistic speakers on there. So you can see between the two, broad and phrase both have different bid amounts. Now is very important to note because you're not always gonna be bidding the same amount on each keyword. Sometimes you might find that phrase match is less than broad. Exact is typically more expensive, but you need to find out for your niche. So obviously dive into which one of these works the best. Let's keep it quite simple. Let's just have phrase match in here. And you should never have multiple match types within one campaign. Keep it simple keep it with one match type per campaign. You'll thank me later for that. Now, after you've done this, of course, you get to the negative targeting. If you have your negative keywords already and you've built out a list, feel free and add these in. Exact matches are what you're typically gonna wanna use, but if you have phrases, such as if you wanna add jumbo in there, that's something that you can use as well. In most cases, you're not gonna use negative phrase unless there's certain terms in there that maybe can be transferable, but negative exact, you'll be using that quite a lot. If you're just starting out, you're just setting up your first campaign, you might need some time to actually pull the data before you actually add these in. 
but make sure you are utilizing negatives and you're not leaving this blank. These are very important for cutting your costs and keeping your efficiency as good as possible. Now, next is the dynamic up and down. So when it comes to dynamic bidding, it all depends on your objective. So for example, dynamic up and down, that will allow your bids to go up and down by 100%. So this you'll use in most cases when you don't know what you want to bid for a product. So if you say no, what you're going to bid, say it's around $2, then you might want to use fixed bids because you know the bid you're going for, that's what you want. You can set it at fixed bids and you won't have to worry about it being up or down. So this is an option, this option we use for a lot of clients, but typically down only is what we need. And the reason is if you have your bid at say for $4 or 64 cents in this case, well, you can set it at 64 cents. You can have the, the bid say at 80 cents, but because the next best competitor is bidding at say 50 cents, you might find that you only bid 51 cents. So that will lower your bid and that will have an impact on your cost per click. Now, if it's fixed bids, just because you bid higher doesn't mean that's what's gonna be the cost per click. Cost per click is gonna be based on what the next best competitor does. And of course, it's, it's the same sort of way. Down only just means that your bid is actually falling to represent that as well. Rather than fixed bids, the bid will stay high, the cost per click will reflect what's actually in the market. So all of this will be really important, especially when it comes to top search. So top of search works in a very important way. So all of these placements, you're gonna be really wanting to pay attention where you're actually showing up. And as you optimize and analyze these campaigns, you're gonna to get to know this a lot better. So let's get into actually where you show up in terms of top of search. So Logitech speakers. So when you actually show up for this, the important thing to look at is, obviously this is a sponsored brand campaign, but as you get to the top of search, you can see that is a top of search ad here. So this one is showing up at the top. And as you scroll down, these are all organic rankings. But as you get down to the bottom where it shows more results, that's rest of search. So that's where you'll show up if you are bidding on rest of search and that's where your placements are showing. Now, if you actually click into the ad and you notice that there are other products, so such as this one here, that's product pages. So all the more important, when you're choosing where to bid, more people are gonna see you at top of search than they are on rest of search and product pages. And we see this all the time. When we audit new brands, we break down where the conversion rate is the highest, it's always top of search. So make sure you are bidding on top of search, set your multiple to be at a reasonable level. Maybe it's 20%, maybe it's 100%, whatever it is, make sure that's in the right place then you can make sure your ads are showing in the right place and converting at the right level. Now, when it comes to naming your campaigns, there's a really important thing to do so you can identify exactly what's running within your PPC campaigns. And we have a really easy to use structure here that you can utilize. If you scan the QR code on screen, you'll get our Amazon PPC Bible for free. You'll get a copy of our naming structure and you can utilize it as you need. So here's how it works. Obviously, if you have a certain naming structure, you want to include as much information in there as possible. So, for example, getting into the naming structure, you want to first include what the product is. Have a couple of words in there so you can just search the product name and it will come up. You want to include information in here so that when you search for the ad type, the ASIN, the SKU, whatever it is, that all shows up quite easily. So when it comes to naming products, what you want to do exactly is first have the name of the product. So whether it be steel mug in there, you want to have that the first name. So first part is the name of the product. Then you want to have the ad type. So sponsored products in this case, then you want to have the match type exact match. So EX for exact, you can see in here, we have all of this laid out in a very easy to read way. So you can just copy and paste and utilize that as you need. Then you wanna put the Perinason in there. So if you do wanna track it on Perinason level, put the Perinason next. Then you wanna put the Child Asin. 
Then once you've done all that, it's all good to go. So let's utilize this as the example. And once you've put that in there, what you need to do is look at what portfolio you're gonna use. And obviously create portfolios as you want. You don't need to have them, but if you do wanna have them organized in that granular way, portfolios are a good way. So obviously group that by perinacin, you can group it by product type. However granular you wanna be, you can do that. And then you get to start dates. So if you are gonna be launching a campaign that just runs continuously, you can go ahead and just leave that as no end date. It's typically what we do. But if you know that you're running a campaign, say for the prime day period, the holiday season, you can set that to end at a certain point, but typically we can just pause the campaign so it's no problem. Daily budget should be based on the amount of clicks you want on a keyword. So for example, this, we might add in say 10 keywords in there and we wanna get a certain amount of clicks on this campaign, whether it be 30, 50, 100 clicks, whatever it is a day, we set our target and we base the budget on that. So. Bidding wise, we will want to look at what we're going to spend. So say that is a dollar a click, we're going to budget at 100 clicks we want a day, we would then want a $100 budget. Now you do need to make sure that's realistic in terms of the search volume for the keywords. Some keywords don't have the search volume to actually sustain that. So do keep that in mind. You can't just set a $100 budget and expect to spend it. But when it comes to the bids, if you have good search volume keywords, what you can do is make sure the bids are at a good level. And on that, you will start to spend and you will get top of search. But if you do have your bids, placements, and budgets in the right place, you will get those clicks that you're after. Now, obviously, after you run the ads, it's all down to you how well they convert. You need to make sure your pricing, your listing, your reviews are all in the right place, but the best thing you can do is make sure your PPC is in check and you can start working on everything else. Now next, obviously when it comes to product targeting, this is something that you can also do and have a bit more granular control of what you target. So most cases you're gonna go for individual products, but maybe you wanna go for the category. It's not always gonna be the best option. Sometimes brands convert well on it. It's not all the time. So, you know, typically you'll be going for individual products. And here you can go by exact, for example. You can add certain products to your list here. So go ahead and enter the list as you would. And any ASINs that you think are a good fit, you can copy and paste them there. You can upload them via the templates, or in some cases you can search them. Some should show up under your competitors here, so it should be relatively easy to add these in. But the main thing to look at when it comes to product targeting is price and reviews. You can obviously compete when it comes to the offer, but in most cases, people are very price sensitive, especially if they've clicked on a listing. If they see a better price, that would be something to entice them off. If you're priced around the same, but have a similar amount of reviews, that could entice them off as well. You know, you need to think what you're gonna be competitive with because if they see you on the side of the product page and you're down here, what is it that people are jumping off for? You need to think about that before you choose to target the products you do. So once you have that list in check, the thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you use negative product targeting. And from here, you'll be able to exclude brands, exclude products that don't fit your brand very well. Maybe you're the medium tier of what the brand is and you don't wanna be going against the premium brands. And maybe the reason for that is they offer different things that your product doesn't. Or maybe you don't wanna be advertising on the cheapest products in the niche because you won't convert those people that want the cheapest deal. So all of this you can add in and make sure you're as granular as possible. Now, same goes with this. You can do the dynamic bidding as you want. We'll set it to dynamic down just because that's probably the best option. And on here, obviously, if it's a product targeting ad, you can't use product top of search. You can only use product pages with this. So obviously, if you want to choose, change the placements, make them 100%, whatever you want here, you can do that quite easily. But the one thing to do is make sure when it comes to your naming structure, obviously make it suit the actual product type that you're going after. So PAT for product targeting, 
make sure that you can search it in the search bar properly. Now, the next thing to look at is auto-targeting. And this is something that people did well a few years ago when cost per clicks were quite low. But these days, you can get some cheap clicks from it. It's not always going to perform. So we would recommend you avoid this and do your own keyword research, run manual targeting. But if you do want to run a catch-all, maybe at a low bid, or you want to run an auto on a low bid, that could work well. So for this, obviously, you can set your default bid as you want, whether it be you know $2, whether it be $0.50. Cents. Don't go too high on auto campaigns just because of the situation that they do target whatever they want. They'll base it off what your performance is, what you've converted well on on the past, what your search terms are within the back end of your listing, as well as the title and bullet points. So all this is going to be hyper relevant to what you're targeting. Now, exact match negatives and phrase are going to be very important for autos. If you're running these, you definitely need to be updating this every week. So we use a tool called Scale Insights. This is our main tool that we use for making sure we get negatives in there. So if you do want to check it out, Scale Insights, we have a link in the description with a 30-day free trial and a 10% lifetime discount. Check it out, utilize it if you want, but this way you can automate that process. So if you get something that, say, gets 30 clicks, 50 clicks with no sale, you can have it automate that it goes into the negative targeting for you saves you having to do it all yourself and of course on here add in your negative products you can search them you can upload them or you can enter a list pretty much the same as this and afterwards of course you have all the same criteria down below now not in all cases you need to set one default bid for all match types when it comes to auto campaigns you're going to have four types that you go after close match loose match substitutes and compliments so close match is going to convert a lot better. And the interesting thing is the bid ranges are not very different. So you do want to be bidding a lot higher on close match. In most cases, loose match and substitutes aren't going to perform as good. Sometimes loose match can do okay. Compliments can do okay. Sometimes you maybe want to have a low bid on that. Maybe it's 20 cents, but you do need to be very careful what you bid on because Close match is what's going to convert out of all of these, but you still have no control. You don't know what Amazon is going to choose to target. And out of that, you could waste a lot of money. We find when we audit brands that have a lot of auto campaigns, they have a ton of waste. So avoid these if you can. If you are going to run them and you're very keen on it, just maybe turn these off. Just run close match. If you want to run all of them, just make sure the bid's low and make sure your negative targeting is on track. We hope you found that helpful and hopefully gives you some direction on how to set up effective sponsored product campaigns. If you want more content like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We're uploading tons of Amazon PPC and FBA content like this. So don't forget to subscribe and stay up to date on what's up and coming and what we've uploaded before. If you're struggling with your Amazon PPC, you're struggling to get things across the line or you just don't have enough time to manage it yourself, you can contact us below kickstartppc.com. Schedule an audit with us, see how we can help you out. And of course, until next video, hope you guys have a good one and we'll see you soon. Bye.